Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and in this video we are heading north to Lone Pine, California, and we're going to go explore the Alabama Hills Trail area. I've never been up here, but I've heard some great things about this, and we're meeting up with uh, a good friend who I will introduce to you when he shows up. I've got Marco behind me, uh, my son Jordan is here from Okinawa, Japan, on leave, and oh, this is so needed because for the last week I've been moving. We were packing up the house and furniture, driving a U-Haul truck, and it has just been an exhausting week. And so I am really looking forward to a little bit of open area, camping, doing some four-wheeling, and eating some good food. I know Marco has got some plans to cook up some good stuff and just hanging out with good friends. This is going to be a great trip. I hope you enjoy this video, guys. It's going to be awesome. Our drive took us five hours north of San Diego, California, about 320 miles. Our first destination was the Alabama Hills Recreation Area, which is located on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range and just west of a small little town called Lone Pine. Later in the video, we'll be heading further north to Coyote Flats, but more on that later. I have heard many folks talk about how amazing the camping is in the Alabama Hills area, but I've never had the opportunity to visit and I was really looking forward to seeing if it was going to live up to its name. Now Alabama Hills is just a short drive from town and after winding up the Whitney Road and turning right on Movie Road, we soon hit dirt. Now because we didn't know what the terrain was going to be like, we went ahead and aired down. But after our stay here, Marco and I both agreed it really wasn't necessary. None of the areas we explored were technical. Most of the trails were just an easy dirt road, sometimes a little bit of loose sand here and there, and there were only a handful of small rocky obstacles that just about any stock four-wheel drive with a little bit of clearance could manage their way through. Our plan was to do a little exploring, but more importantly, find a nice campsite that would accommodate us and three other vehicles that would be joining us later this evening. Now, we only investigated a few miles of the trail network that is out here, but the areas we did travel were very scenic and worth the trip up here. There are many offshoots and trails that terminate at primitive campsites, and just about all of them had some fire rings to keep you nice and warm on these cold desert nights. We found ourselves spending a few hours just winding in and out of the rocky formations and just heading down a trail just to see where it went. So we spent the last couple hours just exploring Alabama Hills and on all the network of trails and checking out a bunch of campgrounds and we finally found the perfect campsite that's gonna be awesome for us tonight and we got room for everybody else to show up. It's very windy out here but we've got a little bit of shelter from the wind from these mountains here on my right and my left and you gotta check out this amazing view down here all the mountains and I can't believe there's still snow on the mountains. It's like 95 degrees outside. And then we've got the valley down below where all the trails are. This is just a beautiful spot. I know Marco is already talking about what's gonna be cooking for dinner. So we're gonna get set up. This is gonna be a great night. Marco and I have really dialed in our camp setup and breakdown. You know, once you've done it as many times as we have, it just takes a matter of minutes. And even though this campsite was pretty amazing, the ground wasn't very level and both of us are a little particular about how we like to sleep level. It's always something that a few rocks can remedy. 
So roles have changed at camp tonight. Uh, I've got dinner duty, and Marco gets to relax, and he's going to run the camera. Oh, get, yeah. Get to relax, man. Thank get, you very much. No worries, man. So we're cooking dinner. Without everybody else, we actually have some other folks that are showing up, but they got stuck in traffic, so they're not here. But let me show you what I got for dinner. We've got some three-cheese ravioli with asparagus. We've got some spaghetti sauce. We've got some Parmesan cheese. And we've got some pesto with basil that we're going to put on some bread. It's just going to be a great Italian meal in the back of Brad's Jeep. Now, many of you out there have criticized and said, if it wasn't for Marco, I would probably starve out on the trail. But the truth is, I do have some cooking skills up my sleeve. But my brother Marco has inspired me to get a little more creative. All right, Jordan, I know it's not Marco's cooking, but come Definitely on. Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> How is it? It's not bad. It looks amazing, brother. It's vegetarian, just for you, man. Thank you. No meat. All right, honest opinion. You can give it to me raw, man. You can give it to me raw. It is good, man. All right, right on. Oh, it's really good. That's awesome. I mentioned we were waiting on a few of the folks to join us, and just before sunset, Michael from Overland Bound and his son, Miguel, joined us all the way from Northern California. Michael and I have been talking for a while about doing a trip together, and I was glad the day finally arrived. I'm sure, like many of you, I've watched plenty of his YouTube videos, and I've always wanted to see his Toyota Land Cruiser in action firsthand. It is an incredibly capable rig. You know, this is this is nice because anybody can get out here. Right, right. But if you want to go past a couple of gatekeepers and be by yourself, as you guys naturally <laughs> discovered, you can you can do that. But then there's ghost towns up here. There's Cerro Gordo mines, and and then I've never been up uh, to Coyote Flats. Okay. So that'll be that'll be new for all. Of us. A few hours later, Marco's daughter Paula and her boyfriend David joined us and brought our convoy count to a total of five. We all enjoyed a little camaraderie and relaxation around the campfire. Tomorrow and the following day, we're going to be unforgettable adventures. Well, it's a beautiful morning here at camp, and you can see that last night everybody came in. Uh, I just had some coffee. We're all waking up. But as I was waking up, uh, I see this guy sitting up on top of his vehicle. <laughs> Let's find out what's going on here. Michael, what are you doing on top of your rig this morning? Well... I'm fixing some lights because I uh, I broke I broke my lights. <laughs> How did you break them? Well, so do you want the story I tell, or do you want the real story? Uh, give it to us real. All right, all right. So I'll tell you guys this, um, but just don't share it. I don't want this getting out. <laughs> uh, I ran into my garage, uh... and there was nothing. There was nothing. Uh, preventing this breakage. Uh, but I do want to say thanks, Randy, at KC, because he sent me a new part, yeah. and that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it back together. Well, it's cool, and it's modular, and it's an easy fix, but yeah, I got to get some coffee, man. You're working too early for me this morning. <laughs> Beautiful day here, guys. We're going to be hitting the trail. Uh, we're going to be actually leaving this area and going exploring somewhere on new this morning. Should be a good time. Marco's going to be cooking up breakfast. We'll check that out here in a second. So Marco, once again, you are filling the camp with a beautiful aroma. What's for breakfast, man? Machaca burritos. Okay, what's in a machaca burrito? Shredded beef from Sonora, tomato, egg, onions, and green chilies. Wow, it smells good, dude. I can't wait to dive in. Really? Wow. Machaca burrito. Hot off the grill. That is awesome. That's not like camp food. <laughs> <laughs> we eat a little bit better than a normal average person. <laughs> Thank you, Marco, awesome. for breakfast once again, brother. Thank you, Marco. It's awesome, man. After a very hearty breakfast, we packed up and began our trek out of Alabama Hills. I want to just mention that this was a great group of easygoing folks. We all had a mission but I think we were all more interested in enjoying the moment. All 
right, so we just drove about 30 minutes from Lone Pine, California, up here to the west side of Bishop. It's really windy out here, but we are in a beautiful spot on the trailhead for Coyote Flats. Now, none of us have been on this trail before. It was just kind of a discussion like, hey, let's just go check it out. And it's beautiful. I mean, the mountains here, it looks like the trail is heading up into the mountains. We know the trail is easy to moderate, and we know there's some camping sites out there, but really this is just gonna be an adventure to go check it all out. So this should be a great day. Coyote Flats is a popular overlanding destination with lots of primitive campsites, some of the most spectacular views California has to offer, and a massive network of trails. In fact, according to the USDA sign on the side of the trail, there are over 2,200 miles of designated trails and roads in this forest. I can't even begin to count how many trails we saw over the next two days that we wanted to go explore. Definitely coming back here. Most of the trails are easy, but depending on where you venture off to, you may find you need oversized tires, high clearance and lockers. We did a few times. The first section of trail is switchback after switchback as you make your way up several thousand feet in elevation. By the end of the trip, we would find ourselves wheeling it well over 10,000 feet. My son Jordan was going to be taking driving duty this trip. He doesn't get to do much off-roading in Japan and has really been looking forward to this for several months. I'm glad he was able to come home and join me for this adventure. I don't mind giving up the steering wheel, just this once. Michael, this is a beautiful spot, man. We just went from the desert yeah. to the pine trees. How did you hear about this spot? Yeah, so, boy, it's been back since uh, probably 2010. Um, there's a guy that had an 80 series and he used to travel around this area a whole bunch and he put Coyote Flats on his uh, website. And I always thought, man, I gotta go out there and check it out because he had some photos, it was awesome. But I've never, I've never had the opportunity to come out here. So uh, when I heard that that you and Marco and the whole crew hadn't been to Coyote Flats. I said, you know what, that's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out to Coyote Flats and see what we discover. It's a mystery, it's an adventure, none of us have been here. So we're gonna go up here and, and see what we find. Yeah, well, it's awesome, man. I'm yeah. loving every second of this. Yeah, it's been great so far. Paola has really been bitten by the off-road bug. She wheels every chance she gets. She truly shares her father's passion for adventure. I wouldn't be surprised if in the not so distant future, her Jeep is just as outfitted for overlanding as her father, Marco. And speaking of Marco, he has done a major overhaul of his Jeep suspension over the last couple months, recently installing a long arm kit, and he's now running 38 inch tires. This Jeep will take him just about anywhere he wants to go. So we've been on the trail for about four hours and it's awesome. I mean, we have gone all the way from the desert up here to we're on the pine trees. It's green, it's beautiful. Now we've just pulled off the trail here, just to the side, having a little lunch, just some simple food. We're gonna do some good cooking tonight, but check out the scenery that we've got going on. It is green everywhere. You can see the snow up in the mountains. Hopefully we can find some lakes or a river and find a really good campsite. This is beautiful guys. What more could you ask for?
we finally reached some elevation where there was still some snow on the ground. And the higher we climbed, the more spectacular the views became. It wasn't long until we were on the Coyote Flat, and once up here, you really realize just how far away from everyone you are. With the long trail winding across the flat and the mountains on both sides, yeah, this is what it's all about. It was getting late in the day, and our hunt for a campsite had begun. As we were coming down the trail, we were looking at the map and we saw a little offshoot and we said, you know what, let's go check it out. Let's be a little adventurous. And boy, did this pay off because we found this amazing spot at the end of this little trail road right here on this pond in between these trees. And there are, there's dozens and dozens of great campsites out here and we've tucked ourselves away in these little pine trees. This is a beautiful spot. There's a little wind but we've got some good protection. There's a few mosquitoes from the water but nothing a little bug spray can't handle. So everybody's getting set up. I'm gonna take you in there and walk you around and show you what we've got set up for the campsite. There's a fire pit, some logs to sit on. It's really amazing. I cannot believe here on a Saturday this place isn't packed. But you know what? Sometimes you just find a hidden gem. All right, everyone, we're gonna do a quick walk around camp, but I realized that I hadn't really talked much about the vehicles we're with, and this is David's 2016 Tacoma. So well built, he's on 35s. Uh, he's got a huge rooftop tent on the Lightning Rack. I love that setup, he's got a lot of storage in there. Very capable rig. Uh, my son, he's over here passed out uh, in camp. He's had a rough day driving. He drove most of the day. Uh, but we've been uh, using the rooftop tent. This is the first time that I've used the rooftop tent with two people. And it's cozy up in there, but we had plenty of room. And Michael is over here. We don't have any connectivity, uh, but he's using Gaia uh, maps and a, a good traditional map, which is always important to bring to kind of plan out our route tomorrow because we're going to be going out a different way. But here is his 96. Land Cruiser, very well built, very capable, lots of goodies on there. And then they've got their ground tent over there, which that thing pops up and collapses super quick. It's really nice. And then this is Paola's Jeep, and Paola is Marco's daughter. And she's been building up this, this Gobi Jeep for a long time. You may recognize that tent. That's my old tent. She's making good use of it and loves it. Uh, it's a great Jeep, very capable. And then, of course, What's Marco doing over here at camp? He's over here cooking up dinner. Buddy, what's for dinner tonight? Ahi tuna with Japanese rice and bok choy. Oh, you guys don't know, but ahi tuna is one of my favorite meals. Now, Marco, a little secret. Before you started cooking, you were staging some things. What were you staging them for? For the cookbook. Coming soon. Coming soon, yes. Yep. In fact, Pal is over here taking pictures for the cookbook. So that's camp, guys. We got a nice little fire ready to go. Sun's probably going to be going down here in about an hour. It's a beautiful spot. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. That whole time I was walking around camp with the camera, to my back was this deer that just decided to walk out to the lake and grab a drink of water not 50 yards away from us. Marco has outdone himself again. Thanks for dinner, brother. Everybody is enjoying it. Hanging around a campfire with full bellies and talking about the day's events is way better than sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. As the sun set, we all pretty much called it an early night. The next morning I was up early, as I usually am at camp, and while making some coffee, six doe and a young buck decided to stroll past our camp. It really is the little things like this that just add to the memories of these adventures. I don't know how we got so lucky to find this campsite, but I'm so glad we did. So while I've been over here brewing some coffee this morning, Marco's been over here working on a breakfast for everybody. Making some flaxseed bagels. Come on, that's a heck of a breakfast right there. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate breakfast, man. Well, now that we are all caffeinated, we've got some good breakfast in our bellies, we're packing up and getting ready to head down to Coyote Flats and continue exploring this trail all the way to 395. Finding this campsite has been such a gem. And watching those deer 
walk through here this morning, man, that was just so majestic. Now, there are plenty of mosquitoes here, and that's why we're kind of packing up a little bit early, but I gotta say, it's gonna be tough to leave. Got a great night's rest. I'm really looking forward to what the rest of the day is gonna bring. As we made our way out of camp, we only really had a few agenda items we wanted to accomplish today. One was to see if we could find a funnel lake that we had heard about. Two was just to explore some of the trail offshoots and see what other campsites we can find in this area. And third, find our way back to the 395 before sunset because we did have a long drive home. So we've been wheeling behind these trees here on a trail that's kind of come over here and then we've kind of lost the tracks and we can't really figure out where the trail continues. It shows on the map that it should head that way and lead towards a lake, but sometimes this happens when you're out here exploring a place you've never been. So we've got to figure out how to get all the way over there and check out the lake. So after a couple minutes of searching, we found some tire tracks that weaved in and out through these trees. So we think we have found the trail. So we're gonna come on through here and then head over the snow and then open over there. And we think that's where it leads, but sometimes it's kind of fun just figuring out where the trail is. mission accomplished. This is a really beautiful spot. There's a whole network of upper and lower lakes here and I think uh, if we were ever to come back again this might be another alternative camping site. Really really amazing. Now getting in here was a little harder than the rest of the trail has been. It got a little rocky so at, this was probably the first time that we've needed a little bit of high clearance and some larger tires but I'll tell you what coming back here the reward is totally worth it. This really is a hidden gem, and I was sure to mark it as a future potential campsite on my GPS app because we'll be coming back here, I think. The trail leaving this area became much more rocky than we had seen over the last two days, and there was plenty of mud from all that snow melt. Time to have a little fun.
once back on the Coyote Flat, we thought we would have just a short drive back down the side of the mountain. Now remember, none of us had been here before and we were just looking at a trail map that didn't have any information about upcoming obstacles. In fact, I had actually planned on ending the video right here with the rigs riding off down the side of the mountain. Well, it was down the mountain where things got very interesting. I've got to mention that David Stacoma and his driving skills really impressed me. Getting over obstacles like this is no easy task for most long wheelbase rigs. He made it look easy. The first obstacle was technical and admittedly a little fun, and we all made it through with no issues. Come on. There you go. Now passenger, passenger, passenger. There you go. You're good. You're good. Come on. It was on obstacle number two where things got a little hairy. This section has just enough of a drop off on the passenger side that you really need to finesse your way through here. Michael was struggling to find a line that worked well for him. We spent 20 plus minutes trying to get him through stacking rocks, trying multiple lines, but really with just no luck. One of the cattle herders we passed on the way down had told us that there were several obstacles along this trail and the harder one was still to come. And because it was getting late in the day and we had only made it past one of these obstacles and we still hadn't cleared the first vehicle through the second obstacle, we had to make the call to turn around. We'll live to fight another day. Well, today has been so amazing. Uh, we didn't know what to expect on the trail and going through that section towards the lake where we were getting flexy and muddy, we were having a blast. And then coming here through Coyote Flats was so beautiful. But then when we started going down the backside of the mountain and we saw that sign that said, most difficult trail, we should have heeded our warning a little bit because things got a little technical and we you know, tried to get over some of those obstacles. We were stacking rocks and we finally made the call and said, you know what, this is getting a little hairy. This is gonna take us way too long and we didn't even know how many more obstacles were still ahead. So we made the call and we turned around and now we're gonna backtrack and head out of here. This is not a failure. This is a huge success because being out here has shown us an amazing part of California that we've never seen. And Marco and I have already talked and we're gonna come out here and start exploring this. A big thanks to Michael from Overland Bound for guiding us through this. This has been a wonderful, wonderful weekend. If you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.